When disaster strikes, whether it be hurricanes in, in Louisiana or uh, wars overseas, communication among foreign aid workers and first responders on the ground is crucial but often very difficult. And we have learned that the hard way with many lives lost, uh, even uh, people talking about 9-11 and the failure of key communications gear. This is where Global Relief Technologies comes in. Their goal is to use high-tech solutions to get help to the people who need it when disasters strike. Michael Gray is the founder and chief executive officer of Global Relief Technologies. He's here for today's Tech Effect. Jim Goldman here as well. And, and sir, I want to just uh, get straight to it and, and explain exactly what it is, uh, what your technology does, and how uh, it would, for example, have changed a, a problem like we saw where there were problems with communication at 9-11 or in a Katrina. Right. Um, well, basically, if you think about the problem in the field today, uh, there's a lot of people trying to communicate with each other. A lot of that communication is being done with pencil and paper or over voice-based mm. communications. And uh, our approach, based on uh, the frustration of a lot of folks that I've worked with, including my own experience in the field as a refugee officer, um, really look at uh, simple, basic technology that's available today, like handheld smartphones, as a way of collecting that data and uh, transmitting that data on a real-time basis uh, so decision makers can see that information analyzed and make decisions that need to be made and in a way that they have not been able to do in the past. Uh, so you talk about 9-11 and Katrina. Actually, we were deployed into Katrina with the military, and it was very striking when, when we saw the uh, Marines in particular collecting information on the levels uh, of destruction and areas that had been destroyed mm -hmm. uh, by the, uh, the, the surge uh, and just wind damage. Uh, all of those things uh, were, you know, typically that was done with pencil and paper. And now it's being done electronically with handheld devices, but very simple to use technology. Jim? Michael, when you look at the trends that are shaping up right now in technology, people are becoming more reliant on these kinds of devices. And, you know, we look at how easily it is to deploy these kinds of things. As far as the trends are concerned with you, how difficult a sell is it for your company to convince a government agency, whether it's in this country or overseas, to utilize this equipment, to utilize your company to get this kind of stuff deployed as quickly as possible? I mean, are you seeing a nice upswing in business right now? Well, it, it initially was very difficult, and understandably so, because people don't want another device or, an, or a, type, a type of technology that's going to slow down their operations in the field. So we knew that when we established the company, given our own work with uh, refugee operations. Uh, it, the technology ultimately has to be very simple to use. If it's not simple, then the uh, refugee officer or the first responder will take that device and they'll set it aside. They, won't, they will not use it. Mm -hmm. So simplicity is really the key to our success. Um, but beyond concept and deploying into the field, uh, what we've been able to do is show how the technology works, the fact that it is not simply a concept, but it's technology that's really making a difference in the field. So uh, whether it's tracking the avian flu in Southeast Asia, which we've been doing with the Navy medical community, um, or focusing on uh, other types of disaster relief operations right here in the United States, including floods recently in the Northeast, uh, it's when you put that device into their hands, that's the proof. Uh, and so far, we've had great success with the technology because we're keeping it simple and focused. Michael, from both of us, thank you. Thank you.